Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4. And while you're turning there, just turn to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Just hold your finger there while I'll get into that right as I get into the preaching time. But I want to start out in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 through 11 this evening. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And once you've found it, let's all stand in honor of God's Word as we read God's Word this evening. Matthew chapter 4. If you have it, give a good strong amen. Yeah. Scripture says in verse 1, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Let me just stop right here. That's why we believe in an every word Bible. It's not an every thought Bible. It's an every word Bible. If God didn't just preserve his thoughts, he preserved his word. Somebody can say amen right there. And it's in the King James Bible, by the way. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands, they, they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Tonight I want to speak to our church on this subject, identifying Satan's tactics. Amen. Identifying Satan's tactics. I've had this sermon ready for months. Just have not felt like it's the right time. And I feel like it's the right time now. You say, why? Because the devil's been fighting our church. And I want you as a believer, as a member of our church, to understand we've got to identify his tactics so we understand what's going on. Because if we don't, he'll destroy our church. Now, God's promises, let me say this, God's promised the church divine perpetuity. He says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We're promised that the church is going to make it. But can I tell you, we can be the tool that Satan uses to destroy this church. That's what I don't want. I hope you listen tonight. Father, take these next few minutes and allow me to be a help to thy people. Lord, I, in my own life, I, I, I don't want to become a tool. I don't want to become that one that Satan uses. I've got to know his tactics. I pray that you'd allow me to be a help to thy people this evening, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Satan's tactics, I don't think this is quite right there. There you go. Satan's tactics never change. Satan is smarter than most people because he knows that if something has worked in the past, it'll work again right now. He's not, he doesn't have to be creative because we keep on falling for the same tactic that he's always done all the time. And for some reason, we never wise up to the fact that Satan has the same tools, the same tactics all the time. What he did when I was a child, he's still doing today. What he did in the New Testament, he still does today. You and I have to understand that Satan, get this now, he, he's, he's always after the church, and he's always after the believer. Now, God warns us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, just, just hold your finger in Matthew 4, but go over to 1 Peter 5, verse 8, very familiar verse. God says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the who? The devil. As a roaring what? Lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I want you to circle the word sober. And I want you to put this beside it, prepared. God says you better be prepared. 
He says to Satan's out there. He says to Roy, he, you've got to be prepared. You know, the, um, you, you, go to, you, go to, you go to anywhere and you watch. If I've, I've watched some videos. I don't know if you've ever out there in, in Africa, if you've ever gone out to the wildlife and seen the, uh, the wild animals. But I tell you this, a lion is very sly. Lion just watches his prey till the prey's not paying attention, and then boom, they're going at they and they kill the prey. Can I say tonight? We have got to be prepared and understand Satan will fight Maranatha Baptist Church. Why? Because we're out there winning souls. We're seeing people saved, seeing people baptized, we're seeing people grow in the Lord. It's a wonderful thing that God is doing here. But can I tell you, Satan isn't happy about what's going on inside this place. So we when he says be sober, he's says be prepared he says be sober be vigilant circle the word vigilant put this beside it pay attention pay attention can I help you out tonight this is not a playground this is a battlefield I'm afraid too many I, I think we're finding a lot of churches are treating Christianity more as a playground and as a social club than understand we are at war tonight. You say against the United States, against our governor, against no, we're at war against Satan. And we've got to understand we are at war tonight. And when you're at war, you better pay attention because if you don't pay attention, you're gonna get killed. It's the, it's the soldier who gets used to the bullets flying by his head that eventually gets shot. You've always got to be sober. You've got to be prepared. You've got to be vigilant. You've got to pay attention to what you're doing. Then I want you to know what he says, because your adversary. Circle the word adversary. Put this beside it. He's not your friend. I want to say it. He is not your friend. By the way, he's never been your friend. Before you got saved, he was not your friend. And now that you're saved, he's definitely not your friend. Can I tell you tonight, Satan is real. I know in vacation Bible school, we have someone dress up as a, in a red suit. And I know that we do that just to try to try to help the kids. Can I tell you this? Satan's not dressed up in a red suit. Can I tell you tonight that Satan is out there to destroy God's people? And we've got a, he's our adversary. He's our opponent. He's the one we're fighting against. I'm not fighting against my spouse. I'm fighting against the devil. I don't fight against the pastor. I fight against the devil. I don't fight against a church member. I fight fight against the devil. I don't fight against those who are in sin. I fight against the devil that promotes that sin. What I'm saying tonight is we have to understand who our adversary is and our adversary tonight. Hey, it's Satan. Understand he is an adversary tonight. He said, be sober, be prepared, be vigilant, pay attention. He's your, he says, because your adversary, he's not your friend. As a roaring lion, circle that phrase, he tries to intimidate. Christian, listen to me. Satan has no power over you. Did you hear me? Let me say it one more time. Satan has no power power over you. I hear these preachers talk about, the, we, you know, that you're possessed by the Spirit. The only, the only Spirit that possesses the believer is the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen right there. There is no spirit that's going to possess me other than the Holy Spirit of God. Satan cannot touch me. Satan cannot do anything to me unless he gets permission from God. Jo the book of Job shows that God puts a hedge about us. Get this now. But he's as a roaring lion. All he can do is roar. Sadly, we listen to the roar. Sadly, we let the roar cause us to stop. Sadly, we let the roar cause us to flee. We forgot that God is greater than Satan. He says, as a roaring lion, notice his next phrase, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I want you to circle that word devour there and just put this, he wants to kill you. God says in Luke twenty two thirty one, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as we. Have you ever, ladies, have you ever sift that flour? I remember I'd help my mom when I was a kid make some biscuits. 
And she'd say, now, son, now you need to sift that flour. And I'd put that flour in that sifter, and I would sift that flour, get all that flour separated so it could go. Now, get this now. Satan wants to put you in his sifter, and he wants to separate you from yourself. He wants to get you and to grind you into powder. Why? Because he knows if he can get you and I to, to that point where he sifts us, get this now, he can take our confidence from us, our courage from us, our faith from us, and as long as he can get us to live in fear, as long as he can get us to live without confidence, Satan has won the battle. Get this now. He's our adversary. He's out there to sift you as we. Can I tell you, just as much as he wanted to destroy Christ, can I tell you, he wants to destroy you. Christ gave us an example. Three times Satan tried to go after Christ. We just read that in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus, get this now, so he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He's now weak, he's spiritually strong, but he's physically weak. Get this now. And he, get, and he took Jesus, I, I, and this is interesting, he took Jesus at his weakest physical point, but his strongest spiritual point to try to destroy Jesus. Jesus had just come off 40 days of praying and fasting. I got news for you. You fast and pray for 40 days, you're going to be spiritually on a stronger side, but physically you're going to be weak. Now get this now. He was strong spiritually, which means get this now. When you're strong spiritually, you've got to guard against the overconfidence because you lose that vigilance, you lose that soberness that you need to have because, oh, we just had a big day. Oh, boy, we're seeing people say, oh, my bus route just had a good day. Oh, people walking down the aisle. Oh, God's doing this. And we lose our vigilance, and that's when Satan comes inside. Satan doesn't have to destroy the weak Christian. He goes after the strong Christian. Because the strong Christian is the one who's hurting him. Now get this now. So he turns to Jesus and he, ta- he begins to tempt him. He says, why? he says, why don't you turn these stones into bread? And Jesus says, no. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then he takes Jesus up into the pinnacle of the temple. And he says, if you fall down, he says, let the, an- he says, let the angels bear you up. And Jesus says, no. He says, we're only to bow down to one person. Then he takes him to a high mountain. And he says, if you fall down and worship at me, I'll give you all this power. And listen to me, he three times he tried to get Jesus and every time God used his word, get this now, to overcome Satan. Now, I want you tonight, I want you to understand, Satan's tactics are always just two things he uses. First one is he questions. So he does. Throws questions. He doesn't, look at this now, he doesn't have to say, he doesn't tell a total lie, he just questions. He gets you to question in your mind if it's real. Get this now. He places doubt in your mind, which is the opposite of faith and boldness. And once Satan come, begins to question, okay, the Garden of Eden. Did he not the Garden of Eden? He didn't say, hey, you, you, that, that God's, God's an idiot. No, he said, yea, hath God said. He simply questioned the word of God. That question caused Eve to doubt. That doubt caused her faith to be weakened. That weak faith caused her to take of that fruit and fall into sin, and the rest is history. Why? Because he got her to question um, God's word, question whether God's really real. Now listen to me. He tries to get you to question what's going on. Why? Because that's his tactic. Can I help you out? For instance, there are several things that he questioned. He questioned the authority of God. Get this now. He questioned Christ's deity. He questioned Christ's power. He questioned Christ's ability to overcome the flesh. He questioned God's word. He questioned God's um, Christ's method of worship. He questioned God's ability to promote. Now listen to me. He still does the same thing today. He questions the authorities in your life. Listen, it's not that he's that he's rebel. He's saying rebel. He says just. 
question authority. We live in a day in our fundamental Baptist movement where everybody says, well, you just got to question the authority. At some point, listen to me, if we question every authority and everything they do, listen, if you know this book, you'll know when your authority is going wrong. Now, if I ever get up and I start preaching against this book, you vote me out of the church. Vote me out. But get this, at some point, we're questioning the leadership, we're questioning the styles, we're questioning the, the decisions, we're questioning this, we're questioning that. And let me tell you something, I've been around church my entire life, and I'm telling you, many a church has been questioned to death because God's people won't get behind God's authority, and it destroys the church. Hey, watch out! That's what he's doing to our children. In the public schools, our kids will go to the public schools and they teach these kids to question mom and dad, mom and dad, what mom and dad believe. They don't tell your mom and dad's bad. They just question, what are they doing? They're using Satan's tactic. You see, he's, he's never changed. Listen, when I was, as long as I've been in church, this is the first time I've pastored a church. as an evangelist for 28 years. I've had three different men as my pastors as an evangelist. Can I tell you, at some point, I just, if they make the decision, they make the decision. If I, have a, if I had a question, I'd come to them and say, can you explain it to me? But get this now, I did not try to cause any one of them any problems. Why? They're the pastor of the church. You say, preacher, are you having people question me? I don't think I do. I don't know. But may I tell you, I just know that that's his tactic. And most of the time, get this now, it's not that they go to the leader, they go to the follower. Satan didn't go to Adam, he went to who? Eve. I call it parking lot ministries. They don't talk when the preacher's around, so they go out to the parking lot and have their parking lot ministry. I was preaching in a church in North Carolina years ago, and I didn't know the church was having any problems. And I mentioned the parking lot ministry, Brother Dion, and, and people started, they started getting mad, getting up and walking out, and I'm thinking, what's going on? Dr. Gray was preaching with me, and he gets up, and he, he, he saw what was going on, so he just kind of lowered the boom, and more people got walked, walked, began to walk out, and I'm thinking, what in the world's going on? I can't believe Brother Hardge would walk out like that. I, I said to the preacher, I said, what's going on? He says, Brother Dominic, he said, we've been having problems with the disgruntled going out into the parking lot and talking about what they don't like is going on inside the church. Look at this now. It was a soul winning church. It was a good pastor. Did, would he do everything like I would do it? No, but nobody does everything like I would do it. That's not the question. He believed the word of God. He believed right somewhere. We've got to watch out. Satan's tactics start coming in. He just starts getting you to question what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, let's understand God's blessing this church. Let's keep Keep going after the souls of men. Hey, and, 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 and keep the doctrine right. Why? That's what God wants us to do. He questioned Christ's deity. See what he mean? He gets you to doubt your salvation. Can I help you out? God's able to save you forever. I was thinking about, it, I was thinking about it yesterday as I, was, as I was mulling over my mind about this truth. If Christ's blood cannot save you for an eternity, then Christ's blood is not God's blood. We sing, there is power, power, wonder, working power. You know, some churches just need to say, there's no power, there's no power. Why? Because they believe you can lose it every day of the week. Now listen to me. At some point, you've got to stop doubting what God's done in your heart the day you got saved. But preacher, I feel guilty. Okay, I know you might feel guilty, but get this. At some point, if you're saved, you're saved forever. You do something bad and you feel guilty. Oh, I must not be saved. Let me help you out. You wake up one morning and you don't feel you don't feel saved because it's early in the morning. There's a lot of mornings like that for me. 
I wake up and man, I'm, I'm like, I'm just kind of stumbling to the door and hoping the dogs aren't cantankerous that morning. Most of the time, they're barely walking around. Now listen to me. Just because you don't feel saved doesn't mean you're not saved. Satan's going to try to get you to question and question, question. Let me ask a question. Go back to the time you got saved. Did you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to be your Savior? Okay, if you did, you're saved. But what about this? Hold on a second now. But, but what about this sin? Let me ask a question. Were you alive when Jesus died for your sins? Only one that has been alive since then is Miss Shirley. That's it. Was that wrong, Miss Shirley? I'm sorry. Listen, none of us were alive. Do you understand that everything that Jesus paid for is future for you and I? So why is it that we don't think that he can pay for the sins that, we, that we've not yet committed? It's a matter that Christ paid for our sins. Listen to me. It's paid for. Now stop letting him get you to question that salvation. Thank God when I get saved. Hey, say forever. Hey. He questioned God's power. Do you remember that? Well, you're just not smart enough to do God's work. You're not qualified. I've learned this. If God can preach a sermon through a donkey, God can use any one of us. Somebody help me out right now. I think, I even think these teenage boys are smarter than a donkey. Well, maybe not, but anyway. <laughs> Especially the one that goes inside and thinks that closing the door, you have to turn the light off. But anyway. We won't mention any names, but the first name starts with a V. But anyway. <laughs> now, you listen to me. Listen to me. There's a lot, a lot of time people sit in pews and they think, oh, God could never use me. That's, that, now, that's not God talking to you. That's Satan putting the question in your mind. God could never use me. You don't know my past. Listen to me. You, it, you, ought, you ought to be glad you don't know the past of everybody inside this church. You'd have no confidence in anyone. Listen to me. It's not about how bad your past is. It's about how great your God is. He can use you. Stop doubting whether God can use you. God can take a drunk and a drug addict and get him saved and make him the assistant pastor of Maranatha Baptist Church. I think God can use you tonight. He questions Christ's ability to overcome the flesh. Well, oh, preacher, I just, I just don't think I can overcome my sin. It's just controlled me so long. No, you can overcome it. Christ is greater than your sin. But I've been addicted to this thing. Listen to me. I, I like what Brother Harjo says. I could always ask him, say, now he's addicted. He, I said, what was it? He says, want. It's the want to. How bad do you want to overcome sin? I was talking to a guy um, a little over a week ago who had, who had overcome a heroin, and he, I said, what was the secret? He said, desire. He said, I wanted, I wanted to overcome it more than I wanted it. He says, that's why I quit it. Listen to me. You've got a Savior inside of you who can help you overcome whatever your besetting sin is. It may have controlled you most of your life, but thank God, God can help you to have the victory if you understand that the power of God is greater than the power of sin. Amen. He gets you to question God's word. Well, you know, this is 2020. It can't happen today. Really? I'm tired of whiny preachers that say it can't happen in 2020. When it hit our church, we just decided one thing. We're not stopping. We're not stopping. I'm glad, I'm glad that I have a church that says, yeah, preacher, God, hey, God's still alive. God can still do it. We've been going out every week since, the, since COVID has hit, seeing people saved, baptized on a weekly basis. How? Power of God. Amen. I've heard for years, missionaries can't make it in Africa real long. Well, you've done it pretty good. 25 years is what your video said. Come on now. You often hear a preacher goes to an area, well, that's a preacher's graveyard. Oh, hogwash. 
It's only a preacher's graveyard because the preacher gave up. At some point, you've got to look at where you are and look at the God and say, he called me here. It can happen. God's word says that he can still do the miracle today. Hey, why don't we trust God's word? He also questioned Christ's method. See what I mean? His method. He says, you know, you need to change. You need to get some more flesh inside of your worship. God says, no, we're not changing how we do it. We're not bringing a drum set in. We're not bringing colored lights in. We're a church, and we represent light. We will keep light inside of the auditorium. Now, listen to me. And he's always getting us to question, well, you know, maybe if we change this, we could grow. Every time I've watched a church change from an independent Baptist church and start copying the liberal churches out there, they die. Why? Not our DNA. Our DNA is the King James Bible. Our DNA is the blood of Jesus Christ. Why am I trying to get the DNA of Satan to build a church? Let's use the DNA of Christ to build the church and say it can still work today. Talked to someone yesterday. He said, man, nobody. He said, I've been listening to your sermons. He says, preachers don't preach like that anymore. I said, no, they do. I said, they do here at Maranatha Baptist Church. Listen, when y'all voted me in, you knew what you were getting when you voted me in. You're the dumb one that voted me in. I didn't vote myself in. <laughs> Listen to me. You knew what you was getting. You know why? You, oh, you had a preacher before that preached the old time religion. Thank God, and you got another preacher now that's just stubborn enough, just just hard headed enough. Say it can still work today. He questioned, Satan questioned God's ability to promote. You know, if you, if you fall down and worship me, I'll, I'll give you everything. Listen to me. It's not about me being ruler or me being king. It is about us going out and reaching the lost for Jesus Christ and trying to reach this area for Jesus Christ. So he questions. The second tactic he does is this. He accuses Scripture calls him the accuser of the brethren. Listen to me. Stay off the internet. Well, did you hear what so-and-so said? Well, let's check your life out. I'm tired of a pharisaical generation that wants to tear down everybody because that's exactly what Satan, Satan doesn't have to work because we're doing it for him. We're tearing everybody down. We're trying to accuse everybody. They're doing this. And, you know, they don't even comb their hair. On the, they, have a left, they have a left part. They don't have a right part. They got a right part. They don't have a left part. They wear weird socks, not black and white socks. Yeah, you're doing good. You're doing good, too. Listen to me. All he does is he points his fingers. I've preached all of that to come down to this. Be careful that you don't become a tool in Satan's hand. You see what I mean? Questioning everybody and accusing everybody. Listen, I can point to Brother Deoma and say, you got a problem on top of your head. You have no hair. He could point to Brother Dan and say, Brother Dan, you don't have a perfect head because God covered yours up. You say, which side are you on? None of your business. Can I tell you this? All it takes is for us to start looking around and finding the problem with everybody. And Satan will use that to destroy this church like that. Have you ever thought that you could go to God and say, God, 
can you help them? I don't know who's wrong. God, but whoever's wrong. God, would you change whoever's wrong? My wife and I we were talking. We were in a church, members of a church. Preacher had to go out in a parking lot and break up a fight. I couldn't believe Tyler and Jacob were fighting in the parking lot. But anyway, <laughs> that would not be a battle. But anyway, <laughs> the beard would win. But anyway, <laughs> do you understand? Listen to me. Satan doesn't have to. He, doesn't, he uses people to do his work. And I'm telling you tonight, if we're not careful, we're going to start fighting each other. We'll start to get, listen, do you understand when you do, when you get in a work like this, okay, where the oxen where where the oxen are, okay, where there are no oxen, the crib is clean. But if there's oxen, there's dung. He said, "What's that? Manure." Say, "What's that? It stinks." But the oxen's working. You're going to find problems with each other, certainly. Why? Because we're sinners saved by the grace of God. But thank God we have a common goal. We're trying to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. I can look at Brother Harjo and say, good night, wearing a vest. What is wrong with you? (laughs) He could look at me and say, Brother Domley, where's your Tommy gun? I can look at Brother Davidson and say, why don't you get a real suit instead of being so conservative? Are you trying to show us off? And you listen to me. I've watched good churches go down the drain. Because Satan didn't have to do the work. God's people did it for him. They got involved in the accusation. They got involved in the fighting. They got involved in the finger point. Listen to me. At some point, you're going to, listen to me, you're going to find problems. Can I help you out? If we all took off our shoes tonight, it would stink. Can I help you out? Everybody needs to use deodorant. Why? Everybody's armpit stinks. Somebody say amen. Can I help you out? Please brush your teeth. Why? Your breath stinks. (laughs) Where is this? (laughs) You say, why you say it? Because none of us are perfect. We're all sinners. You start nitpicking everything, you're going to nitpick it to death. Just nitpick, 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 nitpick. And, and there comes a point some people just say, I've done. You've nitpicked me to death. They just can't take the picking anymore. They get tired of it. Ready? Let me tell you what my mom, my mom used to say. Son, zip it up. She says, son, if you don't know how to do that, I'll help you out. Well, I got to tell somebody about it. Okay, get on your knees before God. Say, God, I need need your help. I I pray that you be with my brother and my sister. God, I don't know what's going on. God, can you help them? I got to tell somebody, God, I need your help. You spent more time on your knees talking about to God about others. You'll quickly stop talking about others because God will point you out. I don't have enough time to pray for others because I'm too busy trying to correct myself. Sin will destroy this place. So how do, we, how do we conquer it? God's Word and being yielded to the Spirit. The Son of God, listen to me, 
had to overcome Satan with his word and through being yielded to the Holy Spirit. Now, if the Son of God needed those two things, I would imagine we do. Next time you want to talk about somebody, let me ask you a question. How much Bible have you read in the past week? Then let me ask you the next question. How much time have you spent in your face before God saying, God, need your help? Satan always fights from without and then from within. But he's destroyed more churches from within than he's ever destroyed them from without. Brother O'Daniel and I, we're, we both believe the same thing. I've said this to you before. Our styles are different. He would never wear this suit. <laughs> Am I right, Mr. Daniel? <laughs> he's, he's a cowboy. I don't wear boots. I don't wear a cowboy hat. Why? Because I don't want to mess up my hair. I saw Brother Pridgen with a cowboy hat out in the parking lot. I think, yeah, 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 I don't think I could ever do that. <laughs> but the reason why Brother O'Daniel and I got along wasn't about our style. It was about this book, our God, and what we're trying to get done. That's why when I came here, he and I didn't have cross words with each other. We loved each other. We were good friends. Why? Because it wasn't about style. I'd come in his office and I'd see an OU thing and every once in a while I'd say, well, who do you owe? <laughs> Don't you start down there. I say, you sure you don't want a big A right there? You sure you don't want that? Brother Domley, you want a love offering? Okay, oh you. I'm telling you tonight, we as God's people had better learn. Satan doesn't have to do the work. He uses, it. He uses God's people. We ought to be at this altar tonight saying, God, I don't, don't ever let me be a tool. Oh, God, don't ever let me be a tool. I'd rather be a tool for God than to be a tool for Satan. Because one minute as a tool for Satan can destroy much good. Father, tonight, Lord, we have a good church. I don't think we have any problems in here I, other than a normal church. But I want to prevent them. I know Satan's been going after our church and Apparently, he must consider our church a worthy opponent if he's doing this. Lord, I'm asking you, help every one of us take inventory of our life and ask yourself, have I become a tool that Satan has used lately? May we do our best to stay yielded to your Holy Spirit, stay in your book, and just keep going winning souls for thee. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.